Hello, we're going to be discussing the 20 time rant and two parts of the hypothesis deals with controlled and confounding variables. There are some very scientific uh, definitions on the web or even in our uh, books. So we're going to have to break it down and put it into normal um, layman's terms. So controlled versus confounding variables. There's a great example that I found on the web which really defines everything. So they talk about in here the very um, de specific definition, an extraneous variable in an experiment design that correlates with both independent and dependent variables. Like it says, horrible definition. So we'll give you an example in here, and I'll go through this example and we kind of go look at it. So there's this old classic research that deals with when the murder rate rises, so does the ice cream sales of ice cream. So we got murder rate, murder rates rising and ice cream rates rising. So possibly number one, like it says, murderers cause people to buy ice cream. Okay, kind of weird, but possibility. Number two, purchasing an ice cream causes people to go for people to get murdered or be a murderer. So that's probably one, murderers, murderers cause people to purchase ice cream. Possibly number two, purchasing ice cream causes people to be to be murdered or get murdered. So those are two possibilities. Now a third variable, a confounding variable, is what causes the increase in both ice cream sales and murder rates. For instance, weather. When it's cold winter when it's cold and wintry, people stay at home then go outside rather than go outside and murder people. I know this seems weird, but if we think about it, not many people go outside during the summer, um, so they're not really interacting with a lot of people. I'm sorry. People in the summer go out. They start interacting with people, and also in the summer people buy ice cream. Well, this correlates together as in, well, it's hot out. People are interacting. They're going to possibly go high in murders. At the same time, it's hot out. People want ice cream. So with this, it's weird because... Murder rates and ice cream, which one's independent, which one's dependent, but in the end, neither are the reason why the other happens. Higher ice cream sales doesn't equal, aren't going to increase murder rates, and murder rates don't increase ice cream sales. The weather is the variable that increases ice cream, ice cream sales and increase, increases murder rates. And the one that we don't see, that third variable that we're like, oh, it's neither the ice cream nor it's the murder. It's called the confounding. So it's that variable that you didn't think about that causes the reaction or the experiment um, data occur. So the ice cream had um, nothing directly to do with, hey, you eat more ice cream, you're going to kill more people. And it didn't happen the other way, as in once you murder something, murder someone, you're going to go get ice cream. Neither of them had a correlation, but the correlation was the weather, and that's the confounding variable, the one that we didn't see and we didn't notice. So for your experiment, you're not going to know your confounding variable until the end, because you won't be able to see that confounding area, that confounding effect. So we can figure that out after uh, we do our experiment. Here's another example. Condition one, we have two variables. We have the amount of force and um, the same ball. So we have these conditions. Now, looking at it, you're like, okay, we rolled a 10-pound ball with 10 pounds of force. We get a certain distance. Well, we roll number two, we roll a 5-pound ball. See how the distance is. So the only variable that we change or should have changed is how much force we got. We're measuring how long the ball goes through how much force. But the confounding variable is going to be the angle. If you don't look at the angle, that's going to disturb all or disrupt all your uh, data and it's going to make it all wrong. So that's a confounding variable, the one you're not looking at that actually causes a problem in your data. And the last one, like we set up here, we have confounding that variable that you didn't think about that's going to skew your data. The controlled variable is something 
that you do not change as in we go back to our picture here we've got the amount of force being changed we've got the distance being measured we've got the confounding variable as in the angle of the board but the controlled variable the variable does that not, does not change there's actually two in here there's the plank or the board that we use to roll the ball in so that doesn't change from one to another and the second controlled variable is the ball the red ball up here the red ball down there both are the same red ball and they're both on the same wood plank so those are two controlled variables so once again if we go through all the variables we've got the variable that's being manipulated which is the 10 pounds or the 5 pounds that's changing we've got the distance the ball will travel that's what's being measured the controlled variable is what is not changing and that's the red ball that's being used and uh, the plank that it's being rolled on the confounding variable that you didn't see right away is that the board in condition 2 is angled which will give you different results so that's an explanation of controlled and confounding variable controlled being the variable that doesn't change the confounding variable is a variable you didn't think about that actually did change your results in a negative way so we have to look at those anytime we do an experiment hopefully this cleared it up for you I'll see everybody tomorrow uh, so we can work on that 20 time riot exper experiment have a great night